I love Daphne because it's it's a riot of uh, for the, the, your oral senses, the textures that Strauss gives with the orchestra, especially when uh, this famous transformation music where Daphne, the uh, the heroine, changes from a human being into nature itself, into a tree. It's this glorious passage. And the vocal writing is sublime. It's fiendishly difficult, so hard to cast. But the writing for, the, uh, for Daphne herself, it's beautiful, it's lyric, and it's, it's very high, it's quite low, it's got fantastic coloratura, it's beautiful. And all those things coming together just makes this real rich tapestry mm -hmm. of brilliant singing, which you will hear, and it's so hard, but it's so rewarding. Well, shall uh, I play the, the opening yeah, of the I, opera, which is... So, Daphne, first of all, I mean, she's a child of nature. Strauss is known for his chromaticism. Loads of notes happening at once. But here, the most simple theme is just all in G major, and this is Daphne's theme. So what it reveals, um, Strauss, as we know, is a master, especially this late period, of uh, vocal writing especially for the ladies, especially for the sopranos. And what's great about that is the fact that um, it, it allows us to do fantastic joining between the notes. And all these connections is what makes Strauss, uh, Strauss really. That's Daphne's theme. Lloyd Kippos has a much more, um, he's much more energetic and his music, his little leitmotif sounds like this. Simple. Uh, often associated with the horn as well. Oh, but the other thing he has, so he's always playing the flute. Well, as children, they were playing together and he was always serenading her. And he often has, uh, the flute features a lot through his aria. So we have this little... This is on the flute, yeah? And then he says, as a, ch as a child, we did this and the other. Mm. So the flute's his little leitmotif instrument yeah. throughout. Apollo is the next big character, I think. The sun god. and. When you hear his music, it, it really does feel as if the sun is really beating down. Yeah. I'm just in various guises throughout. In various keys, and it's always a bit like Flash Gordon, I always think. But, um, also, you know, it's very, thump, here I am, very triumphant. There's a very special passage at the end um, where she does finally turn um, into a laurel tree. Uh, it's, yeah, it's one of the most famous passages of his uh, operatic output, and it's just glorious. Where it's there's... all very, very in this sort of very high, ethereal sort of F-sharp. Yeah, key. silvery string Beautiful. sounds. But there's also this seeking. You don't know what key you're in half the time. It's just sort of, oh, oh, where are we? And you can feel the whole thing evaporating harmonically, can't mm -hmm, you? Mm -hmm. And then finally she arrives at this silvery key. And it, it's fantastic, sharp. and yeah, yeah, F sharp, and it's very, um, yeah, ethereal, isn't it? And you get this sort, of which comes all the time. We haven't talked about that theme actually. Mm. It's all there, and it just peters out. It's very beautiful, and he apparently loved the end. He used to play it all the time, didn't he? When you think about it, it's the same or not dissimilar. And so she's gone from G major to oh, fine, it's just sunny. Such such a different feel about it, doesn't it? I mean, you can just ma imagine those really glistening strings. It's going to be amazing. Great. <laughs>